everyone. I just finished my workout for today. There are timestamps in the description box down below the video. So if you would like to skip straight to the workout, you can use the chapter markers to do that. If you would like to see the exercises demonstrated and explained before we begin, let's go ahead and get into that right now so that you know what's coming up. Today I was using an exercise mat, my jump rope, and a set of dumbbells. If you do not have dumbbells, that's fine. I will, of course, be providing equipment-free substitutions as I always do. And the same thing goes if you don't have a jump rope, that's fine. You can still do the workout right along with me. We will talk about what to do if you don't have a jump rope. If you don't have an exercise mat or a yoga mat, um, then grab a towel or a blanket, but you are going to need something that you can lie down on comfortably for our ab exercise. If you are working out on a carpeted floor or on grass, you might not need anything at all, but um, if you're working out on a wood floor or on concrete like I am, you're going to need something soft beneath you. So an exercise mat or yoga mat is ideal. I just use my jump rope mat, but if you don't have a mat, um, a towel should be fine. So this workout is split up into two parts. Um, you can do parts one and two with me, or you really can just do one or the other. Part one will work great as its own standalone workout, as will part two. So it's up to you. I will show you what the exercises look like, and then you can decide if you just want to do half of the workout or if you want to do the whole workout with me. So for part one, there are five different strength training exercises, and I'm going to be using my dumbbells for each of those five exercises. My dumbbells weigh 10 pounds a piece, which is a good weight for me. You may need to use something lighter or heavier that's going to depend on your strength and on your level of fitness. It also depends on what you have available to you and how hard you're looking to push yourself today. So please consider all of those factors when selecting your weights and make the decision that is best for you. If you do not have dumbbells, look for household items that will work. You could grab a couple of shampoo bottles or water bottles, for example. You could fill them with water, or if you wanna make them a little bit heavier and challenge yourself a little more, you could fill them with something like uncooked rice or beans, for example, or maybe some kitty litter, or like a, a powdered laundry detergent or something like that. So the first exercise is push-ups, but I'm going to be doing the push-ups on my dumbbells. So my dumbbells are shaped like hexagons on the end. So that means they're flat on the bottom. This is significant because as I'm down here in my plank position, I'm going to have my weight on the dumbbells as I'm doing my push-ups. And if your dumbbells are rounded here, they're liable to roll around on you and you could fall and get hurt. So I know that people do push-ups on rounded dumbbells. It is your workout. It is your body. It is up to you to decide what level of risk you feel comfortable taking. But if your dumbbells are rounded on the ends, or if you're using household items like cans of soup or water bottles, for example, for your weight, I would prefer that you modify this exercise and do not do your push ups the way I'm doing them because I do not think it is safe to hold on to something that is round, like uh, a can of soup, for example, or a water bottle or a shampoo bottle, or a rounded dumbbell um, while you are in a plank position because it could roll around on you. So I would prefer that you substitute with any other push-up variation that allows you to have your hands flat on the floor or the ground, okay? So let me first show you the exercise the way I'm doing it, and then we'll talk about modifications. So if you do have a set of dumbbells that are flat on the bottom, this is what we're going to do. You're going to grasp your dumbbells like this so that it's a reverse grip, meaning that my palms are facing the wall in front of me and I'm bringing my fingers underneath the handles of the dumbbells like this. All right, so from here, I'm going to come up into my plank position and holding onto the dumbbells with my palms facing the wall in front of me, I'm going to do my push-ups this way. So make sure that your um, dumbbells are directly underneath your shoulders. You're going to bend your elbows and lower your chest as close to the dumbbell as you can, keeping everything else in one straight line from your heels to your shoulders. And then push the dumbbells away from you, straighten your elbows and push yourself back up again keeping your body in one straight line from your heels 
to your shoulders. Now, if you don't have dumbbells that are flat on the bottom, but you do have one of these, one of these pull-up bars that you, um, this is the kind you just kind of hang it in the doorway and do your pull-ups from here. But this also works great for push-ups. So if you have one of these, you can put it on the floor or the ground like this, and you can do the same uh, style of push-up, this reverse grip push-up, using your pull-up bar. So I'm going to grab this bar, but I'm going to grab it using a reverse grip. So again, I'm flipping my palms so that my palms are facing the wall in front of me. I'm going to bring my fingers underneath the bar and grab the bar this way, and I'm going to come into my plank position. So my hands are right underneath my shoulders. My body is in one straight line from my knees, from my, sorry, from my heels to my shoulders. My palms are facing the wall in front of me. And from here, I'm just going to do my push up. So bending my elbows and lowering my chest down to the bar, and now pushing the bar away and pushing myself back up. So if you have one of these, tucked away in a closet somewhere or hanging in a doorway, go ahead and grab it because it works great for the reverse grip push-ups. If you don't have dumbbells that are flat on the bottom or a pull-up bar or some other type of exercise equipment similar to that that you can use to safely do those reverse grip push-ups, then you can just substitute with any push-up variation you want, okay? Literally any push-up variation or burpee variation would be fine here. Just make sure that you're minding your form on your push-ups. So for a proper push-up, the first thing you need to do is find your perfect plank position. So you wanna make sure that your hands are directly underneath your shoulders. You're going to extend your legs behind you and you're going to come up into your plank position, making sure that you're not sinking into your shoulders. If you find yourself doing this, I want you to press the ground away from you actively try to press the ground away from you. That's going to help keep your shoulders away from your ears. If you find that your back is arching and you're allowing your hips or your belly to drop down like this, then what I want you to do is tighten up your abs. What I mean by that is I want you to imagine that someone is about to punch you in the stomach as hard as they can. Think about the way you would brace for that impact. That is how tight your abs should be when you are in your plank position and when you are doing your push-ups, So if you find that your back is arching and you're allowing your hips or your belly to drop down like this, tighten up your abs and use your ab muscles to lift your hips nice and high. If your hips are slightly elevated like this, that's not the worst thing. As long as your back is flat, which it is in this position, then you're not going to hurt yourself and it will actually make the push-ups a little bit easier. So don't worry about it too much if your hips are elevated. I'd rather have your hips slightly elevated than to be allowing your back to arch and your hips to be dropping. So make sure your hips are lifted high. Ideally, you want one straight line from your heels to your shoulders, okay? And then your head. Um, don't forget about what your head is doing or not doing. So a lot of people will let their head drop down like this. That's not what you want. You want your neck to be in a nice neutral position. So make sure that your head is right in line with your spine. Okay, so don't allow your chin to drop like this and don't overcorrect by hyperextending your neck and jutting your chin out towards the wall in front of you. Just make sure that your neck is in a neutral position, head in line with the spine, and then don't let it move. All right, so once you have found your perfect plank position, nothing is going to move. Think of this as a moving plank, okay? So you're going to bend your elbows, you're going to lower your chest as low to the mat as you can, but everything else in your body should stay perfectly still. So from this position, I'm pressing the mat away from me. I'm tightening my abs, my hips are lifted nice and high, and my head is in line with my spine. I'm going to keep my head still as I bend my elbows and lower my chest down to the mat, keeping my back flat. Now I'm going to press the mat away and push myself up. And everything else in my body is staying perfectly still. Now, if you cannot lower your chest all the way down to the mat or to the floor, or to the ground, that's fine. Shorten up your range of motion if you do not yet have the upper body strength or the core strength. 
to lower your chest all the way down to the mat without breaking that one straight line from your heels to your shoulders. But don't try to compensate for the fact that you're not getting your chest all the way down by lowering your hips to your belly to the ground, okay? And don't try to compensate for the fact that you're not getting your chest all the way to the ground by lowering your forehead to the ground. This is a really common mistake. A lot of people do it. So don't beat yourself up, just be aware of it. Okay, so do your best to keep your hips lifted high. Don't allow your back to arch. Don't allow your hips or your belly to drop down to the mat and keep your head still. Don't lower your forehead to the mat. So if you are not able to get your chest all the way down to the mat, that's fine. Just get it as low as you can without breaking that straight line between your heels and your shoulders. Once you've gotten your chest down as low as you can, reverse the movement, press the ground away from you, and push yourself back up. And if you're doing push-ups from your knees, the only difference is that instead of that straight line being from your heels to your shoulders, the straight line is going to be from your knees to your shoulders. But other than that, everything else is exactly the same. So hands directly underneath the shoulders, hips lifted high, so you're not allowing your back to arch, you're not allowing your hips to drop like this. You're tightening up your abs and lifting those hips up high. You're not sinking into your shoulders like this. You're actively pressing the mat away from you and you're uh, pressing yourself up high so that your shoulders are away from your ears. And your neck is in a nice neutral position. Your head is in line with your spine. And from here, you're just going to bend your elbows and lower your chest down to the mat or as close as you can get it. So again, if you are able to lower your chest all the way to the mat, fantastic. If you're not there yet, then shorten up your range of motion. If you can only come down this far without dropping your hips or your belly down to the mat or without lowering your forehead down to the mat, then that's fine, that's your push-up come down this far. Just make sure you're maintaining that straight line from your knees to your shoulders. And then once you're down as far as you can go, you're gonna push yourself back up. Again, actively pressing the ground away from you until you return to your plank position. And just make sure that your body is staying still. Your head is not bobbing up and down and you're keeping that one straight line from your knees to your shoulders. The second exercise is a reverse grip bent over row. So before I pick up the weights, I wanna just um, walk you through the correct posture. So the first thing I want you to think about doing is tucking your shoulder blades into your back pockets. So if you really visualize trying to do that, taking your shoulder blades and tucking them into your back pockets, that's causing your shoulders to go back and down away from your ears, which is what we want. And it's also helping you keep your chest lifted nice and high. That's the posture you want to start with before you even think about bending over, okay? So tuck the shoulder blades into the back pockets. Shoulders are back and down away from the ears and your chest is lifted high. Now again, tighten up those abs. Always make sure your core is engaged. Always be thinking about someone about to punch you in the stomach, okay? Embrace for that impact. And now what you're going to do is hinge at your hips, but make sure that there is a soft bend to your knees. So do not actively try to straighten your legs and lock your knees out like this. Don't do that, okay? Instead, make sure that your knees are just ever so slightly bent. You wanna keep your knees soft. And then, in order to hinge at your hips, what you're going to think about is sticking your booty back as though you're trying to touch the wall behind you with your booty. That is going to help you keep your back flat and the weight in your heels, which is what we want. So shoulders back and down, chest is lifted high, abs are tight, your entire core is engaged. Soft bend to the knees. Now stick the booty back, like you're trying to touch the wall behind you with your booty, and with a flat back and your weight in your heels, you're gonna hinge at the hips, okay? So bend your knees as much as you need to, but do not round your back. You're not trying, you're not rounding your back. You're keeping that back nice and flat. So if you can only come this far, then come this far, that's fine. And if you need to bend your knees to come down farther, great, bend your knees as much as you need to. That's totally fine, but make sure your back is flat and the weight is in your heels, okay? So shoulders back and down, chest is high, tighten up the core, push the booty back, 
bend the knees, flat back, weight in the heels, and this is the position that you're going to be in for your bent over row, okay? So when I say bent over, this is what I mean. And from there, we're just going to row the weights, but it's a reverse grip bent over row. So that means that again, my palms are going to be facing the wall over there. So I'm going to flip my palms so that they're facing you. Okay. So if I turn this way, they're facing the wall in front of me. And again, I'm going to grab my dumbbells the same way I did for the reverse grip push-ups. So my palms are facing the wall in front of me. I'm bringing my fingers underneath and grabbing the dumbbells this way. So now I'm holding the dumbbells in front of me and my palms are facing you. Okay, and from there, I'm going to uh, make sure my shoulders are backing down and my chest is lifted high, my abs are tight, bend the knees, push the booty back, and I'm going to find that bent over position. From here, I'm going to roll the weights. So all that means is that I'm going to bend my elbows and lift the weights up towards my shoulders and then control the movement on the way down. Make sure you're controlling the movement. Don't just let the weights drop down, but use your muscles to control the movement and lower the weights down, okay? You want the movement to always be mindful. Very demure, very mindful, all right? So reverse grip, palms are facing the wall in front of me. Bend over, back is flat, weights in the heels, knees are slightly bent. Just bend your elbows and roll the weights up to reach your shoulders. Control the movement on the way down. That's one, two, three, four, and five. You may ask yourself, why am I holding two cans of garbanzo beans? Well, that's because I'm about to show you your equipment-free modification for that exercise. Now, I know that some of you might not want to add weight to your workout at all. However, I really think that um, pretty much anyone can manage lifting a couple of water bottles or shampoo bottles or cans of soup or beans. So I'm going to demonstrate the exercise holding a couple of cans of garbanzo beans. It is the exact same exercise though, okay? I'm just holding onto beans instead of soup. So I'm going to start in this position holding my cans of beans and my palms are facing you. Okay, so my palms are now facing the wall in front of me. I'm going to do the exact same thing. Shoulders are back and down, chest is lifted high, abs are tight. Keeping the knees soft, I'm pushing my booty back and I am hinging at the hips to come down to this bent over position. My back is flat and the weight is in my heels. My palms are still facing forward. Now from here, I'm going to just bend my elbows and lift the cans of soup up towards my shoulders and then control the movement on the way down. That's one, two, three, four, and five. I also frequently do this exercise with my sandbag. So if you don't have dumbbells, but you do have a sandbag, um, you can use your sandbag for this exercise. If you don't have a sandbag, you might be able to fashion something similar to a sandbag by grabbing a backpack or a duffel bag filled with some sort of weight, like bags of rice or beans or kitty litter or a big bag of dog food, okay? Something like that. So um, that's another possibility, but it's the exact same exercise. Just instead of holding on to my dumbbells, I'm going to be holding on to my sandbag. So I usually do this exercise by grabbing the sandbag from the side handles, but if I wanted to do this reverse grip thing, I have these handles on top of my sandbag that go this way across the sandbag, so I can grab them in the same way that I was grabbing my dumbbells. So with my palms facing the wall in front of me, I can bring my fingers underneath these handles, and then from my bent over position, with my back flat and my weight in my heels, I can just roll the sandbag like this. Now, if you're gonna make a sandbag, or something similar to a sandbag using a backpack or a duffel bag, and you don't have straps that allow you to do that reverse grip, that's fine. You can grab them by whatever handles are available and just do your bent over rows like that. 
But that's another possibility for the bent over rows if you don't have dumbbells. If you have a medicine ball or something similar, you could use a medicine ball. Same exercise, okay? From your bent over position, just hold the ball in front of you. Knees are bent, back is flat, weights in the heels. You can just bend the shoulder, shoulder, no, not the, what are these? Elbows. <laughs> bend the elbows and row your weight, okay? If you have a kettlebell, um, you can do the same thing with a kettlebell. So I don't have a kettlebell, but if you imagine that I'm holding a kettlebell, you can do the same thing with a kettlebell. Okay, so pretty much any kind of weight will work for this exercise. I think I've even demonstrated this exercise before with like a basket of dirty laundry or clean laundry. Um, you can just hold on to your laundry basket and lift it up by the sides, okay? So household items will work. Again, almost anything will work for weight for that exercise as long as it's going to be safe and you can maintain a secure grip on it without dropping it and hurting yourself and it's not too heavy for you. So get creative and use what you've got. But you don't need any equipment to do the exercise. Well, I should say you don't need any exercise equipment. Cans of soup will work, water bottles will work, a basket of laundry will work. So um, use what you have available to you. If you really just don't wanna add weight to your workout, I get it, but I really do think that anyone can manage to do that exercise holding onto a couple of water bottles or cans of soup. So I would like you to challenge yourself. Don't push your body into doing something it's not ready to do ever. But a cans of soup are so light. I really think that even if you're someone that's very averse to adding weight to your workout, I would like you to at least try that exercise holding on to a couple of cans of soup or holding on to a couple of water bottles. And the reason why is because if you don't want to do that, if you're just really adamant, you do not want to add any weight to um, your workout, then you're going to have to do a completely different exercise because if you are not lifting anything, then it makes absolutely no sense to do this movement. So there are options. You could just do good mornings. You could do supine push-ups maybe if you want to work your back a little bit. Um, and I'll walk you through those, but there, it's really not the same exercise. So I very strongly encourage you to try this exercise weighted, even if it's with a very, very light weight, like a couple of cans of soup, okay? But if you want to do just good mornings, you can just do good mornings, okay? So it's um, basically just the bent over part of the bent over row, but you're not gonna row anything because there's nothing to row. So again, you're just going to tuck your shoulder blades into your back pockets, shoulders are back and down, chest is lifted high. Keep your abs tight, core is nice and strong and engaged. Make sure there is a soft bend to your knees. Do not lock your knees out. Don't try to actively straighten your legs. You want just a slight bend to your knees. And again, you're gonna push your booty back, keeping your back flat and the weight in your heels as you hinge at the hips. And then you're just going to reverse the movement. So you're going to press your heels into the ground and hinge at the, hinge at the hips to stand. I always do these with my fingers clasped together behind my neck. So that's a good morning though. You can just do that. So hinging at the hips and then pressing the heels into the ground to stand. Hinge and stand. That's two, three, four, and five. So if you just really wanna be stubborn and you don't wanna add any weight, not even a can of soup, then you can do good mornings. You could also try supine push-ups um, if you wanna work your back, that might be another idea. So for supine push-ups, you're going to want something soft beneath you. So if you're not working out on a carpeted floor or on grass, you're going to need an exercise mat or a yoga mat or a towel. So coming down onto your back, um, you can bend your knees and have your feet flat on the floor and then you're going to have your elbows right out to the side, okay, in line with your shoulders. So if my arms were extended to either side, you want to think like you're making a perfect T or a perfect cross. So you're going to have your elbows bent, but you want them right in line with your shoulders. Tilt your hips this way so that you are pressing your lower back into the mat. So if I don't do that, I can put my hand right underneath the small of my back. If I tilt my hips this way, 
and press my low back into the mat. I cannot fit my hand or anything else underneath there. So make sure you're pressing your low back into the mat and you do that by tilting your hips this way. And of course, making sure your abs are nice and tight, making sure your core is nice and strong and engaged. And from here, you're going to press your, um, what is this? This is a forearm. What is the other half of your arm called? I don't know, your upper arm. You're going to press whatever this area is called between your shoulders and your elbows. You're going to press into the ground as though, again, you're actively trying to push the ground away from you and you're going to lift your shoulder blades up off the mat. It is not a huge range of motion. It's a very small range of motion, okay? So again, make sure your core is engaged. You're going to just press your arms down into the mat and push the ground away from you and then control the movement on the way down. So make sure you're not just dropping down, make sure the movement is mindful and under control and very demure. Sorry, I can't stop. Okay, so push the ground away and then control the movement on the way down. One, two, three, four, and five. All right, so that is a body weight option if you um, don't want to lift any weight to do the bent over rows. All right, the next exercise is bicep curls. So again, we have, we're going to have that same kind of reverse grip on the dumbbells. So again, my palms are facing forward. So we started with our reverse grip push-ups. So with my palms facing forward, I brought my fingers underneath the dumbbells and did my push-ups from this position. Then we did our reverse grip bent over rows. So I kept my dumbbells just like this and did my bent over rows from this position. So after your bent over rows, you're gonna stand and you're going to do bicep curls. So my palms are still facing you. My palms are facing forward. And from here, all I'm going to do is bend my elbows and bring the weights up to my shoulders and then reverse the movement, straighten the elbows and bring the weights back down, return to your starting position. Super simple exercise. It's tough, but it's simple. So again, just make sure that there's a soft bend to your knees. You wanna have your feet maybe a little bit wider than shoulder width, whatever's comfortable for you, but make sure there's a soft bend to your knees. So do not be actively trying to straighten your legs. Don't lock out your knees. There's a soft bend to your knees, and as always, that core is nice and engaged. Your abs are tight, and you're just going to lift the weights up to the shoulders, and then again, in a controlled movement, lower the weights back down, return to your starting position. So it's important that you're not just kind of letting the weights drop down, but that you're really controlling that movement on the way down, and tr do your best to make sure that there's not a lot of this going on. A lot of people, and, and I'm guilty of it too, you'll see me do it as I get fatigued, and I'm exaggerating it now, just so that you see what I'm talking about. There's a lot of like, you know, the body is kind of flailing about. Do your best. So there's a soft bend to my knees. I'm pressing my feet into the ground so that I'm nice and stable here. My uh, feet are about a little wider than shoulder width apart, and my core is nice and engaged. I really wanna isolate this movement right here, okay? So I would like nothing else to be moving as I'm lifting the weights up and then mindfully lowering them back down, okay? What's going to tend to happen is this, okay? Like I said, I'm kind of exaggerating it now. And I'm not saying I don't do it. I do it. You will see me do that as I get fatigued, but you just want to try to be mindful about trying to keep the rest of your body still and really isolating that movement and isolating these bicep muscles trying to make sure that even though your core is nice and engaged and even though you're actively pressing your uh, feet into the ground that as far as the uh, curling the weights it's your biceps doing all of the work okay so well not all the work but you know what i mean so um just be mindful of that but that's a bicep curl. So again, you could do this with water bottles or cans of soup, okay? These are so light. Please don't tell me you can't lift a can of soup. 
You're gonna make me come up with another equipment-free modification for a bicep curl. There is nothing. If you're not curling a weight, then there's really no reason to be doing this. So again, I'm going to encourage you to just look for something that you can use for weight. Um, even if it's a very lightweight water bottle, shampoo bottle, can of soup, something like that. If you have a kettlebell, um, you can do this with a kettlebell. If you wanna just hold on to one dumbbell, you can curl one dumbbell or a kettlebell or a medicine ball. And again, you could do this with a sandbag or something similar. So for this, I would probably grab my sandbag by these handles on the side just to make it a little bit easier. So in that case, I would be doing more of a hammer curl, but you could grab it by these handles if you have a sandbag that, um, that has handles that go this way. So that allows you to use that same reverse grip. You could do that. So my palms are facing you. I could curl my sandbag like this or my duffel bag or my backpack. Um, if you are using a duffel bag or backpack and it doesn't have handles that allow you to do that reverse grip, then, you know, mine has handles on the side, but probably you would have handles that allow your palms to be facing each other while you grab the handles, that's fine. Then you could essentially just do a hammer curl using your backpack or your duffel bag or something like that, okay? So again, just get creative and use what you've got. So for the bicep curls and for this next exercise, if you absolutely refuse to lift even the lightest of weights, we're going to just have to find something else for you to do because there's just really not a body weight alternative to a bicep curl or to this next exercise that's going to be essentially the same exercise. So um, for these next, for the last exercise and for this next exercise, that's our bicep curls and our Arnold presses. Um, I'm really going to encourage you to just use a light set of weights, even if it's just a couple of cans of soup for these two exercises, but if that's not going to work for you, um, please just reach out. We'll find something else that you can do, but you're really gonna challenge me with that because um, if you're not lifting anything, then you know, if you're not curling anything, then uh, you could use a resistance band um, to work your biceps, that would work, but I don't have one to demonstrate, but if you have a resistance band, you could absolutely do that. Um, but if you're not lifting anything, then we're just gonna have to come up with a completely different exercise for you, I'm so sorry, but um, you will find something though. So if you really are, you know, just adamant, you don't wanna lift anything, reach out, we will find something that you can do instead of bicep curls and instead of Arnold presses. But if you do have ways that you can use, let's go through our Arnold press. This is exercise number four of five that's going to comprise part one. So um, again, we're going to maintain this same grip. So we just did our reverse grip push-ups, reverse grip rows, and bicep curls. Now from here, you're going to start with the weights up in front of your chest. My palms are facing my chest. So it's just like we, we just finished our set of curls and now our weights are up like this, okay? So the backs of my hands are facing you. From here, I'm going to bring the, the uh, weights to my shoulders and now I'm going to press them up overhead, both weights at a time. Now again, controlling the movement, I'm going to bend my elbows and lower the weights back down to my shoulders, and then I'm going to bring them back in front of me and touch them together, returning to my starting position. Again, the movement is under control, so I'm not banging them together. I'm just bringing them together in a controlled fashion until they lightly touch. All right, so again, for this exercise, your feet are going to be a little bit wider, then shoulder width apart, whatever's comfortable for you. Your shoulders are going to be back and down. So remember to visualize trying to tuck your shoulder blades into your back pockets. Your core is going to be engaged, so tighten up those abs, like someone's about to punch you in the stomach, and make sure there's a soft bend to your knees. Make sure you are not actively trying to straighten your legs and locking out your knees, okay? So put it all together. This is our starting position. The backs of my hands are facing you. I'm going to rotate the weights like this so that now my palms are facing you and the weights are up by my shoulders. Press the weights up overhead, 
then control the movement, bring the weights back down and return to the starting position. Okay, that's one rep. That's two. Three. Four. And five. All right, that's our Arnold press. So water bottles, shampoo bottles, or cans of soup or garbanzo beans work just as well. All right, so just make sure whatever you're using for your weight, that you are able to maintain a secure grip on the weight. You're not gonna drop it and hurt yourself or break anything. And, and as long as it's not too heavy for you, then pretty much anything will work for weight. So get creative and use what you've got. If you're using a sandbag for your weight or something similar that you have made, using a backpack or a duffel bag filled with some sort of weight, then you can do um, these overhead presses with like a little oblique twist. We've done these several times before and I think we just did them maybe in our last workout or the workout before, we've done them very recently. So just bring your sandbag or your duffel bag or your backpack up in front of your chest like this. And now you're just going to press the bag up overhead. So you're just going to straighten your arms and press the bag up overhead and then bend your elbows again, lower the sandbag down in front of your chest. You can do it just like that if you want. I always add this little oblique twist. So I'm gonna pick up one heel as I press the bag up overhead and I'm going to rotate on the toes, feeling this little twist in my obliques so that I'm facing the wall over there. And then as I lower the sandbag back down, I'm going to reverse the movement. So I'm going to pivot that foot back forward and place the heel down, return to my starting position. And I'll alternate sides with each rep. So now with the next rep, as I push the sandbag up overhead, I'm going to lift the opposite heel, rotate on those toes, and face the wall on the other side, okay? And then as I lower the sandbag back down, I'm rotating that foot to face forward again and placing the heel back down. The only thing to be aware of, if you wanna do that, is that we're doing five reps of everything and that's gonna leave you uneven. So you can either um, do six reps of that specific exercise or you can not have OCD and not worry about doing an extra rep on one side or the other. Um, or you can just eliminate the oblique twist since we're doing an odd number of reps and just do your overhead presses like this. One, two, three, four, and five. And again, the same thing if you're using a kettlebell or a medicine ball or just one dumbbell, um, then you can just do overhead presses. That's fine. So start with the weight in front of your chest. Again, make sure there's a soft bend to your knees. Tighten up those abs and just press your kettlebell or your medicine ball or your one dumbbell up overhead. That's totally fine. So again, for that exercise, the same as with the previous exercise, which was our bicep curls. If you do not have anything that you can use for weight or you really just refuse to add weight to your workouts, we're just gonna have to find something else for you to do because it makes zero sense to just be doing this if you're not lifting any weight that's not gonna do anything for you. So I'd rather just pick a completely different exercise that's going to do something for you um, but it's not going to be similar to our Arnold presses. So strongly encourage you to push yourself outside of your comfort zone and add a little bit of weight to your workout today, at least for those two exercises, at least for the bicep curls and the Arnold presses, okay? Even if it's just a couple of cans of soup, you can do it. You can do that with a couple of cans of soup, okay? But again, if that really is not going to work for you, I don't want you to feel like you just can't do this workout. You can do the workout. There are always ways to modify. There's a solution to every problem. So if you absolutely um, just cannot think of any way to add weight or you do not feel comfortable adding weight, we'll have to just find another exercise for you to do. So I'm here to help, just reach out. And our fifth and final exercise for part one is a four point punch. 
If you follow my workouts regularly, you may have seen this exercise before. We do it quite often, but we haven't done it in a minute. So um, I'll go over it real quickly, but it's a four point punch. So that means we are doing four punches with each rep and we're punching to four different points. Okay, so the first punch is going to be down towards the toes on the opposite side. And then the next punch, you're gonna punch with the opposite hand towards the toes on the other side. And then we're gonna do two punches across the body, okay? So pick up your weights. You're gonna start with your weights here in the middle. Your feet are wider than shoulder width apart. You're going to start by taking one dumbbell and punching down towards the toes on the opposite foot. Then you're going to take the other hand and with the dumbbell in your hand, you're gonna punch towards the toes on the opposite side. So bringing the dumbbell down to touch those toes. And then you're going to do your two cross body punches. So you're gonna punch across your body, punch across your body, okay? That's one rep. So one, two, three, four. That's rep number two. Punch, 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 and punch. That's number three, punch punch, punch, punch. That's four toes, toes across the body, across the body. That's five. So if you wanna use household items like water bottles or shampoo bottles or cans of soup, it's gonna be exactly the same. You're gonna punch, 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 and punch. So with your first punch, you're coming across your body. You're bending this knee as you punch, bringing your item, your whatever you're using for weight, down towards the toes on this side, so it's like a side lunge, okay? And then you're gonna do the same thing on the other side, and then you're gonna punch across your body, punch across your body the other way, okay? So one, two, three, four. That's one rep. It's a four point punch, so each four punches is one rep. So toes, toes, across the body, across the body, that's two. Three, punch punch, punch, punch. That's four and five. If you're using something like a medicine ball for your weight or a kettlebell, then you can just hold the ball in front of you or hold your kettlebell in front of you and then do this side lunge, tap the ball down to the toes on that side. Now repeat that on the other side. And then instead of punching, you can just do a couple of little twists. So you can twist your body thoracically and lift the knee on the opposite side, bringing elbow to knee like that, and then repeat that on the other side. That would work just fine, okay? So it's still one, two, three, and four. That would be one rep. One, two, three, and four. That would be two. So again, if you're using a kettlebell or just one dumbbell, you can hold your kettlebell or your dumbbell like this, starting with your feet a little wider than shoulder width apart, and you can bend one knee, sink into that side lunge, and as you do that, you can bring your kettlebell or your one dumbbell down to touch the toes on that side, repeat that on the other side, and then you can do the same thing that I just showed you with the medicine ball. You can add that little oblique knee crunch on either side, and that will be one rep. So lunge, lunge, oblique knee crunch, oblique knee crunch, that's two. One, two, three, and four. That's three. Lunge, lunge, knee crunch, knee crunch, that's four. And if you don't wanna add any weight and you need a completely equipment-free body weight modification, you can just do side-to-side -side lunges like this. So you're gonna lunge to one side, tap the toes if you can, lunge to the other side, tap the toes if you can, and then you're gonna do those two, you could do two punches if you want. Um, I would recommend it's probably more effective if you wanna do these two oblique knee crunches. So just lift one knee at a time, twist your body thoracically to meet that knee with the opposite elbow, and that will be one rep, okay? So lunge, touch the toes if you can, lunge, crunch and crunch when you need an elbow. That's two. Tap, tap, crunch, crunch. That's three. Side lunge, side lunge, 
oblique knee crunch, oblique knee crunch, that'd be four. Just make sure with your side lunge that again, your shoulders are back and down as though you are trying to tuck your shoulder blades into your back pockets. Chest is lifted high, your abs are tight, your core is nice and strong and engaged. And as you sink into that lunge, you're pushing your booty back, keeping your back flat and the weight in the heel of this lunging foot. All right, shoulders back and down, chest high, abs tight, push the booty back, flat back, weight in the heel. Remember all of that, okay? Because if you cannot reach all the way down and tap your toes with a flat back, then you're going to shorten up your range of motion, okay? So if you can only reach your toes by rounding your back, then don't tap your toes. Your priority is not to tap the toes, your priority is your form, okay? So if you can only come this far into your lunge with a flat back and you can't touch your toes, um, don't say, well, I, I have to touch my toes and then round your back to do that. Keep your back flat. Just sink as deep into the lunge as you can without rounding your back and make sure that you are keeping the weight in the heel of this lunging foot and you do that by pushing your booty back. Remember, you're visualizing trying to touch the wall behind you with your booty, okay? So shoulders back and down, chest is high, abs are engaged. Push the booty back, flat back as you lunge over and tap that toe if you can. And then same thing on the other side, push the booty back, keep your back flat as you sink into that lunge. And if you can only come here, then just come here, tap your knee, that's fine, all right? And then your two little oblique crunches, if you can. If you're a beginner and that last part is too difficult and you feel like you might lose your balance, you can eliminate it and just work on your side lunges, that's fine. But that's it, that's all of the exercises in part one. So it's a super simple format. We're just going to do five reps of each exercise, five times through the circuit. Okay, so by the time you complete part one, you will have completed a total of 25 reverse grip push-ups or whatever push-up variation you're doing, 25 reverse grip bent over rows, 25 curls, bicep curls, 25 reps of our Arnold's press, and 25 four-point bunches, okay? So five reps of each exercise, five times through the circuit. And if you wanna stop there, that's fine. Um, it's short, but it works as a little standalone workout. So you can either do the circuit five times, or you can turn it into an AMRAP. So if you only have 10 minutes to work out today, or five minutes, or 15 minutes, you can set your timer to count down 15 minutes, or 10 minutes, or however long you have, and just see how many uh, rounds you can complete of that circuit. Five reps of each exercise, and just do that as get, get through the circuit as many times as you can during your 10 minute countdown or your 15 minute countdown. Um, that would work as a standalone workout. That would be a great 10 or 15 minute workout. So that is one option. Part two will also work on its own as a standalone workout. So um, you could do either or, or you can do both with me. So for part two, all we're doing is abs and jump rope. Now, when I jump rope, I always just kind of jog in place like this, but any style of jump rope you want to do is fine. So if you are more comfortable jumping with your feet together, great, jump with your feet together. If you're really good at jump rope, you can feel free to do something more challenging like high knees or jump rope jacks. You can jump side to side, you can jump on one leg. Okay, go next. The only important thing is that we are counting revolutions of the jump rope. We're doing sets of 100. So one rep of jump rope means one revolution of the rope. So a set of 100 means that you're going to count 100 revolutions of the rope, okay? So any style of jump rope you wanna do is fine. If you don't have a jump rope, um, first of all, if you plan on following my workouts regularly and you are able to jump rope, you should get a jump rope, okay? Um, I have a link down in the description box for the jump rope that I use. If you use my link and you use the coupon code RUDEBECCA, you can save 10%. Um, I get my jump ropes from Double Under Wonder. They're the best jump ropes I've ever used. I love them, but there are, I mean, there's a million places to buy jump ropes out there. So um, for, in my opinion, a jump rope is arguably the best investment you can make towards your fitness. If you plan on doing workouts regularly and you plan on doing my workouts regularly, it's a really good idea to have jump rope because I use my jump rope in almost every workout. Now, I know some people can't jump rope because maybe you have low ceilings or um, 
bad, bad coordination or whatever, okay? I know some people can't jump rope, so um, you have another option. They sell jump ropes without the jump rope or without the rope. It's really just two handles that you hold on to while you jump over an imaginary rope. So if you're the kind of person that likes to, you know, have stuff like that, then you could buy one of those. You know, my feeling on it is that if you are already jumping over an imaginary rope, I think you can do that while holding on to imaginary handles. But they sell these things. And if you would like to have something that you're holding on to, if that helps you for whatever reason, you can buy one of those. Again, if you plan on following my workouts regularly, you'll get a ton of use out of it. It might be a good investment for you, but I think that you really can just pantomime jumping rope without holding on to handles since you're already jumping over an imaginary rope, okay? So you can just do this or this and pretend that you are jumping rope with me. Um, and I actually have been seeing like um, workout videos on YouTube that do that. So, I mean, it's a thing. It might seem a little silly, but it's a completely legitimate option and it's gonna be the easiest substitution to make and the closest to what I'm doing. But if you don't wanna do that, then any kind of cardio exercise is fine. So you can just jog in place. You can do high knees. You can do jumping jacks, okay? That's fine. Any type of cardio exercise you wanna do. You could do up and down the steps. If there's steps in your home or in your apartment complex, or if you wanna take this workout to a beach or a hiking trail or a park that has steps, that's another option. If you have uh, like an exercise bike or a treadmill or an elliptical or something like that, you could hop on one of those for like one minute intervals while I'm jumping rope. That would work as well. So again, just use what's available to you, just get creative and use your space. So there's only two exercises in part two, jump rope and abs. Here's what I'm doing for my ab exercise. I'm going to start down here on my mat, on my back. I'm going to have my hands clasped together behind my neck, and I'm going to have my legs extended out in front of me. Now from here, I'm going to lift up my um, shoulder blades off the mat, and I'm going to lift my heels off the mat. This is my starting position. Now from here, I'm going to bend my knees and crunch them in towards my chest keeping my shoulder blades lifted off the mat the entire time. Now I'm going to straighten my legs and lower them down with control. So on the way down, my legs are nice and straight and I'm not bringing them all the way down to the ground. I'm just returning to my starting position. So my shoulder blades and my heels are off of the ground the whole time. So crunch the knees in, straighten the legs and lower them down. Crunch, straighten, and lower. Crunch the knees in, straighten the legs, lower down. Now having your shoulder blades lifted off the mat the entire time increases the difficulty a lot. So if you want to make it a little bit easier, you can keep your back flat on the mat the entire time. If I were doing the exercise this way, I would place my hands right here under my booty. It just makes it a lot more comfortable for me, but you can still have them clasped behind your head if you want. You can have them wherever it's comfortable for you. But I think the best place to have them is right here under your booty. So again, you're going to lift your heels up off the mat, bend the knees, crunch them in, straighten the legs, and then lower the legs down keeping them straight, not all the way down so that they touch the ground, but keep them off the ground if you can. If you need to tap them to the ground and take a couple seconds in between reps, obviously do that. But the goal is to keep them uh, elevated the whole time. So crunch, straighten, lower. Bend the knees into the chest, straighten the legs and control the movement on the way down. Make sure you're not just letting your legs drop make sure that you are controlling them all the way down. You don't have to go this slow, just make sure you have this much control of the movement, okay? Crunch, straighten the legs, and lower. So that's the ab exercise I'm going to be doing, but really any ab exercise you wanna do is fine. So if that one's not going to work for you, there are millions and millions of different ab exercises. Obviously, I can't go through all of them. If you need help, coming up with an ab exercise that you can do. I'm right here to help, so just ask. But um, literally any kind of ab exercise you wanna do is 
perfectly fine. So just do what works for you. So that's it, there's only just those two exercises in part two. We're gonna start with abs. We're going to do 10 reps of our ab exercise, and then we're going to do a set of 100 with the jump rope, that's one round. And we're just going to repeat that, we're gonna do 10 rounds. So you're gonna do back and forth between abs and jump rope. 10 reps of abs, 100 reps of jump rope, back and forth until you have completed that 10 times and again, that works great as its own standalone workout. So if you just wanna do part two, fantastic. If you would prefer to do an AMRAP, that would, it would also make a great AMRAP. So 20 minutes, 30 minutes, 15 minutes, however long you have, just set your timer to count down 20 or 25 minutes or 30 minutes for you, however long you wanna go, and just see how many rounds of those two exercises you can complete before time is up. That's another way to approach it. So. Um, I'm sharing with you what I'm doing today, and I'm gonna show you my whole workout. So you are, of course, invited to join me and work out right along with the video and do exactly what I'm doing, but keep in mind that you can always be customizing the workout to suit your needs, okay? So if you have time constraints and you don't have time to do the whole workout, you can just do half. If you don't have time to do 10 rounds, you can do five. If you need to make it an AMRAP, if you have only exactly 10 minutes to dedicate to your workout, set a timer for 10 minutes and see how many rounds you can complete in 10 minutes, okay? It's completely up to you. It's your workout, so do what works for you, but that is the format that I'm following. So remember that I do always take the time to type out the instructions in the description box down below the video, and you're gonna watch me do it right now. So watch me do it read the instructions, but then of course, as always, if anything is unclear with the format and how everything fits together, if you have questions about how to customize it to suit your strength and your level of fitness or to suit your time constraints or your, you know, whatever equipment you have available, I'm right here to help. If you have any questions about the exercises we're doing today, if you have any doubts about how to do the exercises correctly, please ask. It is so important that you understand how to do the exercises with the proper form before you begin the workout so that you reduce your risk of injury and just so that you make sure you're getting the maximum benefit out of each exercise. Um, it is also incredibly important to me that all of my workouts are always accessible to anyone and everyone who wants to do them with me and I'm always here to help facilitate that. So that's why I take all this time during the tutorial portion of the video to go through each and every exercise, explain it the best I can, demonstrate how to do each exercise with the correct form, and I really do my best to try to make sure that I'm providing you with equipment-free substitutions in case you don't have the equipment I'm using, and beginner modifications in case you are an absolute beginner. So if there's anything I didn't cover or you need any further help with um, beginner modifications or equipment-free substitutions. I am right here, so please just ask. But hopefully I covered everything and you understand what's coming up and you know what you need to do. So if you are ready to go ahead and start this workout, grab an exercise mat or yoga mat if you have one. If not, a towel should suffice. Grab a set of dumbbells if you have them. If not, household items. Maybe a couple of water bottles or shampoo bottles or cans of soup. Remember, I also showed you how to use a pull-up bar. If you have a pull-up bar to do your push-ups, if you have a sandbag or something similar that you can make using a backpack or a duffel bag, if you have a medicine ball or a kettlebell that you could use for one or more of the exercises in part one, just gather whatever equipment you're using for part one, whether that is actual exercise equipment or household items. Grab your jump rope if you have one, and if you're jumping rope with me today, take a minute to make sure you are good and warmed up, and when you're ready, let's get started. All right, so my goal is to finish this entire workout in under 35 minutes today. I don't know if that's going to happen. Probably not, but I'm gonna go for it. Just remember, especially if you're working out with the video, to go at your own pace and don't sacrifice your form for speed. All right, so when you're ready, let's go ahead and get into it. I'm starting my watch. And timer is set as a stopwatch. Starting my time right now, three, two, one, and go. So we are starting with five reverse grip push-ups. One, two, three, 
four and five. Now five reverse grip rows. One, two, three, four, five. Five bicep curls. One, two, three, four, and five. Now five Arnold presses. One, two, three, four, and five. Now five four point punches. So punch, 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 and punch. That's one. Four more. I'm gonna zip it so I can try to pick up the pace a little bit or at least maintain this pace as much as I can for the final four rounds. Okay? We're just gonna do that four more times. Starting with another five reverse grip push ups.
shake it out. Just two rounds left. Hoping to finish this part one in under 10 minutes. I have quite a bit of time left, but I'm slowing down, so it's actually gonna be pretty close, but I think I can still do it. Let's go ahead and push. This is our final round, then we're done with part one. I bent over rows. Okay, I already did my nice hip curls, so now moving on to Arnold Press. Five reps. One, two, three, four. And five. Okay, still a minute left to meet my time goal for part one, but I do want to push through. I want to finish as quickly as I can, so pick up the weights as soon as you're ready, unless you didn't need to put them down like I did. Just five more reps. That's two. Three. Four, last one, and five. Nine minutes and 25 seconds. So my timer is still going. I'm just gonna mark my fifth slash because I earned it. And I'm gonna mark down on my paper that part one took me nine minutes and 25 seconds, but I'm not timing parts one and parts two separately. I want to time the workout as a whole today. So if you want to um, time parts one and part two parts one and two separately, part one and part two separately, um, that's fine. 
whatever works for you, um, starting with abs. Okay. So, take as short of a rest break as you can. Take as long as you need, but challenge yourself to keep it as short as you can. I'm gonna go ahead and start round two or part two of the workout. So if you need a longer rest break so that you can towel off, hydrate, eat a half a banana or something, pause the video, come back when you're ready. I'm starting with abs. So hands are clasped behind the neck. I'm lifting my shoulder blades up off the mat, lifting my feet up off the mat. Crunch the knees in, straighten the legs, and lower, that's one. Crunch, straighten and lower, that's two. We're going to 10. That's 10. So now jump rope. Any style of jump rope you want to do is fine. We're counting revolutions of the rope. So 100 revolutions of the rope is one set, and then that's one round. We're gonna do that 10 times. I feel like I haven't worked with Rudebecca in so, so long. Hopefully uh, this goes smoothly. If I trip, I'm going on record right now saying it's not Rebecca's fault. It's my fault. Here we go. So counting 100 revolutions of the jump rope. So count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Twenty. So that was round one. We're gonna do nine more. So starting round two with another 10 reps of our ab exercise. with the jump rope. Round two. Eight more to go. Rest if you need to, but if you don't need to, let's go ahead and start round three. Okay, 
Can you hear that knee? Right there. It's every time I straighten it. Right here. It's really quiet. All right, that's eight. Two more. Oh, my abs are starting to cry. That's nine. And 10. Oh. I have such weak abs. That's only rep 30 on the day. We have to do 100, so this is gonna start to get really tough really fast. But I'm just gonna keep pushing. Okay, another set of 100 with the jump rope. of abs. exercise into like two little mini sets of five. Do whatever you have to do to get it done. All right, another set of 100 with the jump rope when you're ready.
at the halfway point. If you need a little rest break, so you can towel off, get something to drink, let your heart rate come down a little bit. Pause the video, come back when you're ready. I'm gonna keep going. So, if you're ready to go ahead and start round six with me, here we go. seven or eight, I start to really feel it. And then by the time I get to rep 10, it's just like torture. <laughs> I really have to force myself to work through those last couple of reps because my abs are just hurting so bad by the time I get to the end of the set. All right, another set of 100 with the jump rope. 10. 20. 30. 40. 50. 60. 70. without stopping. All right, set of 100. I'm starting that set over, but if you trip, you don't have to start the whole set over. I'm starting over just because I was like, I had barely started the set, so I'm gonna start over, see if I can string together um, a clean set of 100. but 
because I tripped so early on in the set, I just decided to start my whole set over, but you definitely do not have to do that if you trip. All right, when you're ready, next round, what is this, round uh, eight, right? We're getting there. trouble getting through um, your ab exercise that you can do the same exercise with your um, back flat on the mat. I'm lifting up my um, shoulder blades, but that increases the difficulty. So you can always rest your shoulder blades on the mat to um, make it a little bit easier if you're struggling. Okay, jump row. 100 reps, here we go. sets of unbroken sets of 10 for those. to go and I'm still well under 35 minutes so I'm feeling great about that but I still want to push this is for time so as long as I feel I can continue with good form I want to push through I don't want to rest if I don't really need to so final set of out when you're ready if you need to rest you should rest of course Am I 
minus counting or something. I feel like those last couple of sets weren't as hard as the middle sets, like sets three, four, five, six. So my abs are getting stronger by the minute, I guess. Or I'm just becoming numb to the pain. All right, final set of jump rope. Let's push, we're almost done. 32 minutes and 20 seconds. I'm thrilled with that. We are not quite finished yet. No workout of mine is ever complete until we have done our bonus burpee. So we have just one rep left to go. But first, it is time for the McFlurry Minute. I am going to reset my timer to count down 60 seconds for me. I'm going to jump rope for 60 seconds. And if I can make it through the entire 60 second work interval without tripping over my jump rope, everybody wins a free McFlurry. So give me just a minute to reset my timer. I will be right back. All right, my timer has been reset. I have Rudebecca with me today. Rudebecca is my adorable black jump rope with the little white skulls on the handles. And for those of you who have asked me where I get my jump ropes, I will leave a link and a coupon code in the description box down below the video. So click on the link and use coupon code Rudebecca to save an additional 10%. We have a streak going of three successful McFlurry minutes in a row. We are trying to make it four in a row today. We are also in the middle of a completely brutal heat wave. So I'm going to do my very best to keep the streak alive and get us all some free ice cream today. So wish me luck. We are starting as always with a 10 second rest interval and hopefully in just about 60 seconds from now, we can all meet at McDonald's and enjoy some free ice cream for lunch and beat this heat together. Here we go. seen any action in weeks. Just been hanging in the closet, waiting for their turn, and yet had no trouble rising to the challenge today. Rebecca led us all to victory and led us all to free ice cream. What more could you ask for from this super duper little black jump rope with the white skulls on the handles. Click on the link, use coupon code RUDEBECCA to save an additional 10% on your jump rope. So now we have just one rep left to go. Let's go ahead and do our bonus burpee together and then the workout will be officially complete. Here we go. When you're ready, final rep of the day. is now officially complete. I hope you enjoyed this one. If you did this workout with me today, thank you so much. Please let me know what you thought of it and how you did. Thank you to everyone who has been working out with me lately. And even if you are not doing the workouts with me, thank you for watching the videos. 
Thank you for liking and sharing the videos and thank you so much for all of your wonderful and supportive and engaging comments. It really does mean the world to me. Thank you to all of my new subscribers. If you are not subscribed already, please subscribe. And of course, a great big thank you to those of you who have been subscribed to my channel for years. Please know that I appreciate you all so very much. One final reminder that if anything is unclear with the format, how it all fits together, if you have any questions about the exercises that we were doing today, any doubts about how to do them with the correct form, or if you need any further help with equipment-free substitutions or beginner modifications, please just ask. That is gonna do it for today. But before I say goodbye, I have to say one final thank you to those of you who have been watching the videos all the way until the end and commenting with the secret code phrase of the day. So before I say goodbye, I will give you today's secret code phrase of the day. It is, you deserve a break today. So if you are still watching this video, hello, thank you for watching all the way to the end. Please let me know that someone is still watching by going down to the comment section and leaving me a comment that says, you deserve a break today. That is gonna do it for today and I will see you all next time, bye.